Hello everyone and welcome back to Coffee Time. I hope you're all doing well. It's 10am for you, it's 2 in the afternoon for me and this is my third cup of coffee in the last half an hour because I've been procrastinating about making this video. This is a little follow on from last week's video so if you haven't seen that I do recommend watching that first where I call out the community, tell everyone how stupid I am and suggest changing the rules such as banning faction secondaries. Now this video is inspired due to the response that I got to share in this video on places such as Twitter, Reddit and Facebook all at the same time to see what would happen to see how people would respond to it. Now I knew this video was going to be slightly controversial due to the fact that I've got a clickbaity title, I've got a clickbaity thumbnail and it's suggesting changing the rules and nerfing the books that have only just come out and you know fanboys of Space Marines and Necrons will come out on their mass to defend their sacred books and tell everyone they're definitely not broken and eradicators are totally fine. When I make videos like this I always share them around because one it helps my ego and grows the channel and gets my sub number up which does nothing for you but does everything for me so please subscribe if you haven't already. <laughs> But at the same time, it lets me gauge interest or like. It helps get my name out there, for better or for worse, usually worse in these cases. And overall, it's interesting to see hear people's own opinions of like where I have a platform where I can talk to my audience, which is you guys, and I love you all, where I can talk about my opinion and what I think. None of it's serious. I don't really care if you disagree. That's totally fine. I appreciate people who disagree because then I can have a conversation with them and maybe get a better outlook on the game. But at the end of the day, I have a platform. I, I can have my opinion. I can shout my opinion and people listen to it and they either take it on board or they don't and I you know and I'm very lucky to be able to do that where some people don't have that luxury so what they do is they come out with their opinion in negative ways against people who have a louder opinion than them and basically tell them to or just in general just very nasty now I shared this obviously here on YouTube this video on YouTube and I shared last week's video on also Facebook mainly in the competitive pages such as the competitive 40k and I also shared on reddit again on Warhammer competitive which is what two of my favorite places to talk about competitive 40k because there's a lot of other creators there which all have very valid opinions there's a lot of people in there which come up with good ideas and it's a good place to like get the general basis of like just have new FAQs or generally just like how they get the game state at the moment and you can kind of get people's opinion. So I always share my videos there because I feel like I'm part of that community that I can add this to, but it's not always, not always met with positive outcome. And here's some for an example. So this is shared in the competitive 40k. It says, with faction secondary codexes and release of supplements bringing more, are we starting to see the same thing that happened with unique maelstrom cards, but worse? And you know, I've got my clickbaity thumbnail, I've got my clickbaity title. Please watch this video because it's the only way I pay my rent. <laughs> now, it was a let with a, met with a lot of criticism, a lot of hate, but also there were some people in there that didn't actually agree with my opinion. Generally, people coming in with bad arguments, such as this one. Marines and Necrons can't use their stratagems that are active with it. Actually, until everyone else has these stratagems, it's just unfair. Marines and can't have two wins until Chaos do. Dumb arguments, that'd be dumb. Now, I'm not going to pick on this one person because that's their opinion and that's okay. This is my favourite one. Not again. I love faction cards. I love faction secondaries. Don't take them away from me again. <laughs> they are fine. All it sounds like is my book doesn't have them so you can't use yours. I suppose this is classic 40k plays instead of asking them when I do get mine. Focus on your own army. You want to take things away from others. All done masked by some fake notions of game balance. If I am here had their book come out first, they would not be defending the book. And, um, you know, Liam's comment says it whole, totally. <laughs> I play both these armies, so I don't care if I have a stronger book than you because it means I'm more likely going to win when I can actually play events when there's not a pandemic. But I'm also interested in playing a fair game, which clearly most people aren't. And great comments like this one. And fine comments like this one. No, your clickbait will garner many views, but no, this is nonsense. So that's quite interesting. But, th but then again, that, like... Whenever I share like a controversial video on Facebook, it always comes back with like really angry comments and it's everyone just like, oh, you clickbait, we hate you, go away. But then normally that happens on Reddit. I shared this video on Reddit this time and there was lots of like really interesting discussion talking about like how I either, obviously a lot of people did agree. A lot of people said I don't agree, but also I think this. And generally there was lots and lots of great lots of great discussion going on it got like 100 upvotes in like an hour or so which is quite high for this subreddit but then it got removed so sorry this post has been removed from moderators from warhammer competitive and i inquired why and i was told it was because i'm in playing because i was complaining speculation uh what if and what you would change posts uh, which is one of the rules of the subreddit, which I didn't realize. So, so fair enough. I wasn't allowed to post that there because I was implying that we should change the game. 
However, I kind of want, wanted to double down on what I said last week and give more perspective on where I was coming from and also expand on that. So why is changing the rules of Warhammer 40,000 away from what Games Workshop have written a good thing? Well, it's not always a good thing, but we have been doing it for years, for years and years and years. So I've been playing competitive 40k since 5th edition. I kind of got into the 40k at the end of 4th edition and then 5th edition I started playing competitively. I really started playing competitive during 7th edition. I won my first major and I won a few other events and then I haven't really won any major events since then. But still, that's when I started playing competitive anyway. <laughs> now, back then, when you were playing competitive, it was kind of awkward to play Warhammer because Games Workshop put out rules and they put out books, but they didn't actually put out any FAQs at that time. Now we complain when an FAQ doesn't come out after two weeks. Well, during 5th, 6th and 7th edition, there was no FAQs pretty much whatsoever if there was a, an ambiguous rule you had to make it up on the spot and hope for the best essentially we had as ambiguous writing as we do now which is fine now because we have it clarified two weeks later but back then we didn't have that at all if it was ambiguous it was ambiguous every diff single event tend to play it differently every single person had their own idea and that that's just how the game was now what we did have during that time was the etc so the ETC, if you don't know, is the European Team Championships, which are, as the name suggests, are the team championships based in Europe. Now, that for their events, they had a large FAQ, and obviously this is one of the largest events of the world in the world at the time. And what they did was they had a, their community, their group, kind of write the FAQ for their event, essentially. So they took all the ambiguous rules, made their own FAQ, which is in play for their event. Now, this is great because it's there for their event. However, when you have no written article to compare to for an FAQ to for an ambiguous rule, then then you kind of have to go to the next best thing which is a community community led faq so especially for me because i used to play at element i used to play at sanctuary a lot of the people who were running the events there at the time were from the etc they were team england players or they're involved in the in team england and they used to hold like practice events and that's where i used to play that's where i know a lot of people in the competitive community now is from playing from those events so the etc essentially had its own faq in a lot of england and a lot of europe as, as far as i've been told i can't like I don't have like factual evidence, but I have been informed that in Europe, the ETC then or the WTC now, which is which is now known because there was a big breakup a couple of months ago, yada 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 drama. The ETC was well pl mostly played around Europe. It was heavily played in around my areas in the UK, maybe not in the US. I appreciate I've got a, a large US audience, so this does probably is falling on deaf ears now. But anyway, the ETC had their own FAQ. They also had their own mission pack, which was essentially take let's uh, take Eternal War and let's take Maelstrom which is something that we know from last edition, which is like Eternal War is like a mission. You have a Maelstrom deck for a Maelstrom mission. You play both missions at the same time. You have your own scoring system and that's how they play. It's it's, it's its own format. In this, they didn't, they played with Maelstrom cards, but they had their own deck, which is something that I alluded to last time, but I didn't really go double down on it. Whereas the, the fact is that we always had faction specific missions because we had faction specific decks to play the mission. Whereas in the ETC they didn't use this, they had their own deck where every player had their the same deck until very very late ETC, which was like late 8th edition. So this is for like three editions basically. Now what happened in 8th edition? Well the ITC kind of exploded. It wasn't really a thing at the start of 8th edition in the UK especially, but at the end of 8th edition and now 9th edition, the ITC rankings, the ITC mission pack is very much at the front of everyone's mind and everyone knows what it is. Now up until this point, especially in the UK, that everyone had been playing Games Workshop missions, but they'd been kind of taking their own spin on it. When 8th edition came out, everyone started playing ITC, which... As Liam has pointed out, remember when Americans created their entire own mission set because they didn't like the ones in the rulebook? Now, you can't come to someone and say that changing the rules is stupid when the entirety of the US, which meant most of the Western world competitively were playing a completely made up mission pack, which was homebrew. It was basically a homebrew mission pack. No one was playing competitive Warhammer 40,000. They were playing ITC, which is a spin off of Warhammer 40,000 rules with a completely made up mission pack. It has no basis of what Games Workshop had written. It was completely different. It was completely community led. It obviously had some governing body, which was Frontline Gaming. They were the guys who kind of like hosted the ITC and they kind of, you know, they wrote it essentially, but it was all community led. ITC TOs across the world were helping make this pack. And eventually it was the, played at the largest event in the world, the Las Vegas Open in 2020, over a thousand players all playing homebrew missions. Now that is, that is quite baffling when you think, oh, like the comments that I was receiving last week, where it's like, you can't, you can't change the rules. This is what Games Workshop had written. We can't, never, this is, 
At the start of night, we as community decide to stick to one set for the better of the community. It's not a bizarre concept. We were all playing homebrew missions like basically yesterday because the last time you could actually go to an event in the UK, it was ITC. We've only really been trialing out small events because of a pandemic which stops you playing big events anyway. So what was the main thing? about the ITC. Why was the ITC good for the competitive community or for Warhammer in general? Well, one, as I've already said, it held the largest single player event in the world. Like 1,100 players, I think, were registered to play at the LVR, the Las Vegas Open in 2020. The largest Warhammer 40,000 event ever. What else has it shown? It's also shown in the fact that the missions that we play now, which are in chapter approved, which are in the rule book, these are, I wouldn't say a direct ripoff of the ITC, because they're mostly of a ripoff of the Nova missions, which are written by Mike Brandt, who now works for Games Workshop. So he also got a really nice job out of it. <laughs> But overall, we're now playing Mo Nova style missions, and these are written in the rulebook. This is no longer like homebrew missions. The homebrew missions are now canon. Like, you remember when you thought ITC was canon and you just pretended it and you wrote fan fiction about it? Well, now it is canon. Welcome, everybody, to the real fan fiction 40k. So now we're playing a an alternate, slightly modified version of homebrew missions, and they are written in the books that you buy from Games Workshop. And what this has done, the third thing, Games Workshop is through the roof in terms of stocks. Hashtag stonks. So there's some of the three things. The game is as bigger, bigger than ever and no one can deny that. And I can't deny that. It'd be stupid too because that'd be stupid. But what we can say, that again, the, the US wrote their own mission packs to play these events. And then the largest events in the world were playing homebrew missions, which led to the homebrew missions being written in your rulebook that you now have to play because there are no other missions to play. Isn't that very mind boggling? And is it, doesn't that shut down every argument to which told me that I was wrong? I think so. But let me know what you think down in the comments. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense why people are so closed minded. It's like, you can't change the rules whatsoever. This is what Games Workshop has written. And it's like, Six months ago, we didn't care what Games Workshop wrote in the rule book. We were playing ITC, right? <laughs> no one cared. <laughs> now, that's when making up your own rules, writing homebrew missions, etc., was is a good thing. Now, it can also be a bad thing. So I've already talked about the ETC. And I've talked about the only FAQ, the only written FAQ for Warhammer was by the ETC. But then it wasn't very good. It was the problem is with community judgment stuff that you can find that things can start to be biased, either on purpose or by accident, or can completely take an interpretation which you didn't even comprehend, and then that is the rule. Now, the ETC split up, and essentially now we have the WTC, which is the 40K World Team Championships, which is gonna be held in Austria next year. Now, they have written an FAQ more recently, and I'm gonna pause myself there, because before I go and analyze it, I'm gonna be talking about some negative things about it. I wanna say that the WTC FAQ is specifically for the WTC event. The problem is, is because the, the WTC is already very well high regarded in terms of being the world team championships, it comes with a bit of responsibility, which I don't think they quite understand they have. Because anything that they address in an FAQ now, which isn't addressed by Games Workshop because they've either missed it or they just don't want to change stuff too fast because obviously they don't have no data in terms of events and stuff happening. I don't know. Games Workshop don't always FAQ stuff. They FAQ a lot more than they used to and hats off to Games Workshop for doing that. You are absolute babes and I love you. There's a reason I play lots of Warhammer. It's because you're so good. We have we look to other governing bodies, such as previously the ITC. Now we just look at them at rankings. The ITC, you know, the guys at FLG have done a fantastic job and built the competitive 40k community to what it is today. You can't say they didn't. But then we look at the WTC, which is the, the next biggest, largest event. It's probably going to be the largest event in the world, if especially next year, because not only are they going to be timed perfectly, because hopefully by that point in August next year, we're out of the pandemic, or at least we're pretty much out of it. But at the same time, this is on lots of people's minds because it is the, going to be the World Team Championships. It's not the European Team Championships. It's now everybody. Now, so they've released an FAQ and... Again, because of the fact that it was so bred into the European teams, people will look to this FAQ for things that Games Workshop have missed. Because they're such a large, you know, governing body, essentially. They don't govern over anything other than themselves, but they are so large and they are so well regarded that people are going to look to this FAQ. Now, the problem is, is again, is where in the ETC during 5th, 6th and 7th edition, we had a very biased, in my opinion, a very biased FAQ. And I believe that I'm going to be looking, I've looked through the WTC FAQ now and I've 
I kind of feel like there's some things that are there which kind of that are maybe misinterpreted but that maybe are uh, biased I don't know I'd love to hear your thoughts in the, in the comments down below but I'm going to be going through some of the ones that kind of stood out to me that didn't really make sense and again this is just my opinion hats off to the WTC for writing a great FAQ already a lot of the stuff that they've FAQ'd I actually strongly agree with I'm only pulling out the things that I don't agree with so take that with a pinch of salt there's a it's a big FAQ it's like 20 pages and I've only pulled out a page of things I disagreed with but again what this does is it kind of in my opinion sets a precedent for events that will look to the WTC for guidance because it's either a practice event for WTC it's a practice event for a team that's going to be competing in the WTC or just in general they've always looked at this governing body in particular and now they've brought out another FAQ which they're just going to just eat up essentially so there's one point which I don't agree with. In the core rules, it's talking about modifiers to, FA, uh, to AP. It's point four. It says, in cases where a rule allows you to ignore a specific AP value or treat a specific AP value as something else, apply this rule before applying any cumulative modifiers, i.e. a salamander space marine is shot by a heavy bolter that is in the Devastator Doctrine. Heavy bolter's AP1 is instead treated as zero. As per forging in battle, then the additional AP1 is applied by the Devastator Doctrine, meaning that the salamander has a four plus save. This one's a bit of a funny one because I don't I don't actually agree with this one. I think this is wrong in my opinion. Again, just my opinion about all of these rules. So I'm not don't like send a hate or anything. This is just my opinion. Again, I've been afforded a platform where I can have my opinion and people actually listen. So thank you again. They've called the Devastator Doctrine a modifier, but this changes the characteristic of the weapon. So the weapon now has a characteristic of minus two so in my opinion that a salamander wouldn't ignore this whatsoever a salamander would have a five plus save against this point four in the movement phase units disembarking from a transport on the turn their transport arrives from a battlefield as reinforcements are not affected abilities such as omni scramblers but must stay away nine inches from the enemy models as per usual so omni scramblers is something that says you can't sell reinforcement units more within 12 inches of that particular unit you can find it on space marine infiltrators this rule doesn't make sense because the unit that gets out of the transport is treated as reserves for all purposes, such as the fact that it's moved its full distance, so it shoots heavy weapons at minus one if it's infantry, for example. You can all spec scan this unit, which essentially says if it's arrived from reserves, then you can shoot at it with if it lands within 12 inches. And other rules are very similar, such as the Farseer version, which is called... Now, it doesn't make sense that this... I think I believe it says that anything that comes out of transport is treated as reserves or strategic reserves, so just like the transport it got out of so i don't understand why you'd allow your unit to get out within nine inches rather than more than 12 away and essentially this unit that's got out of the transport follows every single reinforcement rule that it follows except for this one in particular to me that doesn't make sense i think it should follow the same rules it should come out more than 12 inches away now there's there's one point in the greater good book that they've come up with a Italian unit may, may have both a prototype weapon system and a signature system if it would be eligible to have both and i appreciate that i've one plays tau but for anyone that doesn't know a prototype weapon and signature system essentially their relics the signature signature systems are found in their codex and the prototype weapon systems are found in the greater good supplement and essentially it says that if you have a tau warlord you may give one of your characters a prototype weapon instead of a signature system weapon now to me that implies that the signature system and the pr is a as a relic or, or a relic because it a relic is essentially what they call the space marines call them but essentially it's a, a unique ability that they upgrade their weapons or you know whatever we'll call it a relic for now because it's easier to explain this implies that a signature system is treated the same way as a relic but also the prototype weapon system is also because it's instead of a signature system it implies it's also a relic or follows the same rules for a relic it says you can give a prototype weapon system instead of a signature system so i don't understand how they've come to the conclusion that they can have both a signature and a prototype weapon if they can take both it just doesn't make sense now, there's an FAQ for the Drakari for the Alliance of Agony Stratagems. This allows you, it says, a homunculus and a succubent must be chosen and thus present in your army. Multiple wallets chosen this way are not cumulative unless specifically stated. The second part of this is totally fine. It totally makes sense. You can't take multiple of the same warlord trait, but it says that to use the stratagem, you must have a homunculus and a succubus. However, the stratagem says, use a strategy if your Archon is a warlord. You can then select up to one homunculus and up to one succubus now, i don't know about you but up to one says to me it says from zero to one it doesn't say select a homunculus and select a succubus it says select up to one homunculus and up to one succubus so again this interpretation in my opinion is wrong but that's just my opinion what do you think
the biggest FAQs that they've got from the WTC are for the Necron and the Space Marine bug. Now, the Space Marine FAQ, I've looked through it. Most of it's fine. There was this one that jumped out to me, which is an ATV cannot be subject to a combat revival stratagem. That is 100% against the way the rule is written, but I also understand. <laughs> I get why an apothecary can't revive essentially a quad bike. That's totally fine. Now, there's some in the Necron one, which I don't agree with, and I'm going to go over those now. Each, when you reanimate, all the models that you place have to go within coherency of a model that was still there. This is kind of like counterintuitive to the way the rule is written where it says you add one model back one at a time when you reduce your pool. But I understand why you would bring this in. It kind of just stops a little bit of jank. The other one I don't agree with is the Resurrection Orb or Eternal Orb slash Rights or Animation slash Repair Barge ability can be used to target the same unit in the command phase. So this is when you essentially revive models into a unit. And there's lots of ways you can do this, but they're all different rules. Now, each rule itself says the unit that you select for this ability cannot be targeted by the same ability. Such as if you use a reanimation orb, it says that you cannot use another reanimation orb on the same unit that turn. Now, what these guys have said that you can't use any ability that revives state. You can only use one ability that revives a model. You can't use multiple abilities. Well, again, when, it ha when in a war gear has its own restriction, do you not think they would have written that restriction into the war gear already? Instead of saying you cannot be selected for the abilities of a reanimation or more than once per turn, wouldn't they say you cannot be selected for a re reanimation protocols or revive abilities more than once per turn? Again, this, this interpretation just doesn't make sense to me. But this is the whole reason I'm bringing these up. It says reanimation protocols as well. Point four, do not apply to wounds slash casualties generated when a unit incurs any mortal wounds, whether they are an effect from attacks, explosions, or any other such interaction. This is half right in my opinion. You don't get reanimation protocols from mortal wounds from abilities because you says you only get reanimation protocols if you react use a resurrection orb or if you are subject to an attack. Now this kind of blanket covers all mortal wounds, which I think is wrong because mortal wounds from attacks should still count if they still resolve during the attack. So I believe one of the comments that from the one of the guys at the WTC said that it's like, basically where I put this is if it's an ability, if it's a psychic power, etc., you don't get reanimation protocols. If it's an explosion, you don't get reanimation protocols because an explosion is resolved after the attacks of the unit. Whereas this, it kind of blanket covers. So if I have a sniper rifle that causes a mortal wound, then I don't get reanimation against that, even though it's from an attack, which doesn't make sense to me. And I'm saying that a lot. It doesn't make sense to me. It's because it doesn't. <laughs> Finally, we have a Canoptic Doomstalker and can only use its Sentinel Construct ability if it is not the sole recipient of a charge. Now, the second part of this is kind of obvious. You don't pay CP. Sentinel Construct ability says when a unit within six inches of this unit doesn't seem right to the way the rules are written. But again, it's like rules are written versus rules is intended. We've had this argument lots of times. Now, the way they've written this, it's saying that basically saying that you're never within six inches of yourself for the Canoptic Doomstalker because you can't overwatch if you're not the sole target of the charge. Whereas if we've got a Chaos Lord or we've got a Demon Prince that says reroll ones to hit for any Demon Princes nearby or Chaos units nearby or whatever, you still reroll ones because you are near yourself. Whereas they're saying in this regard that the Doomstalker isn't near itself just for this one particular ability, which in my opinion is wrong and I don't understand it. <laughs> but that, but that's some of the things I've seen. And again, I don't want to like put the WTC on blast or whatever, you know. This is a large event that the entire world is going to be watching. And I'm giving what I think is valid criticism to their FAQ. They can either take my criticism on board or they can completely ignore it. At the end of the day, I don't care. But we can look to this FAQ and we can maybe see some of the questions or some of the things we might see in a Games Workshop official document, which may come out sooner or later. I've got no idea. But again, this kind of set, sets a precedent. If people are going to be practicing for the WTC, they're going to be playing with these rules. And people are going to lap them up and that's okay because they want to practice for that event. But I need a closing statement and I don't know what to say. <laughs> There's a lot to say. <laughs> at the end of the day, you can play the game however you like. If you're playing at home, the game is yours. Every rule is merely a guideline. If you're playing an event, you have to follow their rules. And until six months ago, we were all playing homebrew rules. So changing the rules isn't a foreign concept. And that's where I want to leave the video, I think. I think that's everything. If you've got an opinion about anything that I've spoken about today, then please let me know in the down in the comments. I do reply to every single comment where I can. If you're here to tell me to go myself then that's fine as well you are more than welcome to because i don't care <laughs> if you like this video then please consider leaving a like and please subscribe if you can we are very close to 20,000, which again as i said at the start does absolutely nothing for you but does the world of god to my ego if you like to support the channel you can grab some merch at health on shop this was our last month's 
merch design. It's the firstborn gym, so you can train your way to two wounds. But this month, we've got a brand new one. It's Ho Ho Ho. Now, I have a Hellstone bolt rifle because everyone's going to have Hellstone bolt rifles when they come out. So consider grabbing this. It's only available until like the 26th of November. After that, you won't be able to buy it for a very long time. So make sure you grab one while you can. It is a pre order slash made to order system. So yada yada yada. More links in the description. Otherwise, you can join the small board gang and click join and join at tier one, two, or three. If you join at tier three, you get an extra video every single week. And without them, videos like this wouldn't be possible. So thank you to them. Thank you to you for watching. Thank you again for leaving a comment and it was a very valid opinion and I'll take it on board. Otherwise, have a great day. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye now.